when we see people are standing on their hands, standing on their heads, doing intense back bends and very incredible stretches. We want to open our mind about what the purpose of all these body movements is. We want to see, can my body be a springboard to the experience of liberation or spiritual enlightenment? A few weeks ago, I saw an article in the newspaper about an experiment that happened. They gave some people 20 minutes of Hatha Yoga Asana, those postures, and then they asked them to solve a problem. And then they gave another control group no asanas and ask them to solve a problem. And it turns out that the people who did the hatha yoga practice or the asana, the postures, were more able to think creatively and to think outside the box. And that experiment encapsulates really the purpose and the underlying reason for doing these things with our body. We are disrupting our habitual patterns of awareness and we're creating a, an opening to new ways of perceiving reality. There's a great sage named Patanjali who uh, wrote the Yoga Sutras. It's like a handbook for enlightenment and he talks about asana or yoga posture. He only says three things but there are three very profound things and the first is sthira sukham asana. That means steady, firm, staunch, and sukham, easy, flexible, and soft, and an asana or a, a physical posture should embody both those things. You know, we're always doing asana, we're always, because asana means seat, and you're always in some way oriented to time and space and gravity. And we can be uh, oriented in a very unconscious way with a forward head posture and a slack jaw, and we're doing the asana of being dull-witted or we can be very rigid and, and obviously nervous. That's the asana of anxiety. Sit firmly into both sit bones. You're gonna raise your arms above your head, clasp your left wrist, and now we're gonna practice the sukham, the flexibility, okay? So if I'm a tree, I'm pushing the roots down as I allow, if the wind is coming, if I yield to that pressure. But at the same time, I'm firmly pushing down and standing my ground in that left sit bone as I reach the left fingertips all the way to the right. And I'm experiencing my full range of motion. And on my exhale, I'm gonna pull that navel in and come back to center. Good. And we'll try the other side. So you're gonna clasp your right wrist and here comes the, the storm, okay? We had better have some roots if there's a storm, but you also have to yield. And so you're gonna come over and yield as you push equally down as you reach those right fingertips and you're also exploring your full range of motion and your nervous system likes that it likes to say how far can i go how deep can i go and you're going to exhale and come back to center good now we're going to allow if it were a tree that to blossom so you're going to spread your fingers and open your palms okay and spread your arms out to the side and now your tree is blossoming as you push the roots down you're gonna reach your branches all the way east and west and your tree trunk north and south and you're experiencing your full range of emotion. You're experimenting with finding your boundaries and pushing them a little bit. And then you take your hands down and you're gonna take a breath and experience maybe a change in consciousness. Let's check. So you just gave yourself the gift of uh, the paradigm of resilience, which is the firmness and the ability to bend, but staying in your roots. So when I lived in the ashram of my teacher, uh, I was given a job, well, they asked me if I would take it, and I said yes, and it was sharpening knives. And so every night, there were 30 knives to sharpen. And I would take the knife, and uh, take it and rub it along the sharpening stone and take it onto the other side and rub it on the sharpening stone and then look down the midline. And if the midline of the blade was slightly curved to one side or the other, it was a dull blade. And I would have to then compensate on that side and, and give it a good rub on the stone and then put it back to my gaze and see if it was perfectly vertical. And later on, when I began to teach yoga and hatha yoga postures, I realized that's what we're doing. We're sharpening the blade of perception, which is our nervous system brain. 
And we want that sharpness. We want that precision of awareness because that precision allows you to enter into the non-dual states of consciousness, which we know as samadhi or bliss. So the uh, other thing we're doing is we're moving bias from our instrument. And we know that if we enter into an experience with bias, we're going to be filtering the experience through bias and we're going to be missing the truth. So we're really going to know that when we do these practices with our body, we're enabling ourselves to have an objective encounter with reality. One of the main things that's going on, we talked about proprioception, that's the feeling of your edges, and you're enhancing your proprioception when you do yoga postures, uh, especially if you're doing bal a balance, because you have to have a lot of information if you're balancing on one foot, for example, and that's very enhanced proprioception. The other thing that happens is interoception. This is the perception that, uh, of the inner, what's going on inside of us. And you know, one of the main things uh, in the eight limbs of yoga, which is Patanjali, the sage's uh, uh, gift to us of what to do to encounter the experience of enlightenment, is pratyahara, and that means taking attention inward. So let's do our practice again, the same thing we just did, and we're gonna experience that we're sharpening the blade of perception, which is our nervous system brain, and we're going to know that we are uh, enhancing proprioception, the experience of our edges, and interoception. It's beautiful because we are equilibrating the inner and the outer in our awareness. So let's try it again. So we're gonna raise the arms up, and we're gonna clasp our left wrist, and we're gonna propriocept that left sit bone because we're moving away from it. And just insofar as I'm reaching away from it, I'm pushing down into it. Good. And we feel that stretch and the expansion of the ribs on the left side. Let's breathe into that. So we're now, there's the proprioception, the outer edge, and you're also feeling what's going on inward. Exhale and pull your navel in. I felt that stretch along my ribs, which is the, uh, uh, your intercostals. Let's grab the other side. So we're sharpening the blade of our awareness as we come over, but we're not gonna like fall over, are we? Are we gonna be pushovers? Or are we going to be strongly rooted? And because we are rooted, we're able to be flexible. Your flexibility is a, a feature of the fact that you have deep roots and you exhale and rise up. Good, now we're gonna do where we blossom and you're gonna feel just this gesture is a form of body language, right? If we were doing charades, you know, everybody would say, well, you must be joyful, you must be expanded, you must be victorious. So we're putting that body language into our body. We're gonna extend how far east, how far west, how north, how south. And by doing so, yes, we are, uh, exploring our edges. Exhale and take our hands down. And this gives the uh, center becomes implicit when you find your own boundaries. So there is a great poet, I hope you get to know him, William Blake. And he said, the road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. And uh, you know, in effect, we just experience the road of excess all the way right, all the way left, all the way north, south. And in that way, we become more and more aware of our own core, our own center. And we need to be aware of the center. That's where we need to be as we encounter the changes and the realities that we're in. So let's do another uh, posture that enhances proprioception and interoception. It's gonna be a simple seated forward bend. You're gonna take your right leg out to the side and just extend it. And uh, if you're seated, uh, you can you can do this on the floor and I'm doing now a really firm press into the boundary of my sit bone and I'm going to draw the toes back and feel the base of my heel and just move my navel toward the knee and pull my navel forward you can see my back's not rounding and I've got a really strong stretch going on here and I'm going to breathe into it normally when I'm encountering a boundary like this, I would hold my breath. I don't want to be here. This is too stressful, right? This is a mini stressor, okay? So I'm giving myself a mini stressor. I'm a little bit micro stressing over here. And now what are we going to do? We're going to condition ourselves to breathe fully when we're under stress. Do it. And you use your breath to probe your experience. Good. And 
and my navel is easing toward the knee, and then I come up, and I come back, and I'm back to my center. We can pull that foot in, take a moment. So when I felt that strong sensation, as insofar as it's a strong feeling, interoception, a strong inner feeling, my attention was gathered into the present moment. So when you do a pose, whether it's a stretch or a balance or something that's requiring a lot of attention, all your awareness is being compelled into the here and now. And the here and now is empowering. And we're going to look into that a little bit more, how the different sages keep telling us here in the present moment is where you're going to get power, where you're going to get energy, and where you get inspiration and the uh, solutions to what's going on. So let's try, of course, we're going to do everything with symmetry, everything with balance. Uh, so we go ahead and extend our left leg out to the side and we press firmly into the sit bone. We can flex the, the foot back toward us. I'm starting to feel that interoception and I'm going to move my center over to the knee and just ease forward until the feeling becomes a boundary, like, oh, this is enough, okay? So I'm at my boundary now and it's your boundary is yours and mine is mine. My boundary means nothing to you. Okay, in the practice of Hatha Yoga. You must find your own, and it's not a judgment. So you're finding it, and I'm at mine now. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna breathe. I'm gonna, I'm at the, uh, pushed beyond my comfort zone here. What, what shall, shall I hold my breath and wait till it's over? Or shall I breathe in fully and encounter the reality, get the information from it? Let's do it. We'll breathe in, bravely breathing, bravely experiencing, even though I'm a little past my comfort zone, but I feel the body says, you know, keep doing this, this is good for me. The body talks back, tells me things. Exhale and come back to center. Good. So we just experienced an enhancement of present moment awareness. Let's take a moment and taste it.